I'm gonna speak an obvious truth. You guys all know, flying's expensive. In this video, I'm gonna show you three ways you can save thousands of dollars in flight training. I'm Jason Miller, a full-time professional flight instructor. On the Finer Points channel, you can join me as I bring you tips and tricks that I've learned from 20 years on the flight line. Welcome back to the finer points. You know, you guys know I'm out here teaching flying all the time and I see people waste so much money in areas they just don't have to. This applies to certificates, ratings, flight reviews, checkouts. We're gonna be expeditious and teach you how to spend less money. More importantly, how to stop throwing money away. I'm gonna show you in this video three simple tips on how you can save thousands of dollars in flight training and it's easier than you think. All right, the first thing I wanna tell you guys is people can save so much money if they just kinda of trim the fat off of the lesson, right? This isn't horseback riding, this isn't swimming, there's prep work that has to be done between each lesson. It's really like a three to one ratio. For every hour you're in the airplane, there's three hours of study and prep before the next lesson. Usually with a CFI in an airplane, you're paying at least $250 an hour. So, you know, every six minutes matters, right? That stuff totally adds up. And if you look at this one example, um, this is Danny, and I'm not gonna pick on Danny because we both knew that it had been, gosh, a year or more since he had flown. So uh, he needs a flight review, he's out of, currency um, out of proficiency and he came out for an audit so just keep that in mind but we go up and we do some maneuvers and you know the, the basic stuff the checklists the clearing turns um, all that stuff has to be there if I'm going to see him as somebody that's ready to be signed off and returned to the flying world in addition to the flying skills right so it's it's fair to think like you know we have to work on flying skills but the first couple maneuvers I asked him for um, he just forgot Clearing turns. Turns out here, but before we do it, let's remember clearing turns this time. So for each one of these little maneuvers, let's just do some clearing turns. Remember that a clearing turn is going to be 90 degrees of change and then back on heading. So if you go out for like a club checkout or something like that and they ask you to do a maneuver, just start it by like, you know, clearing to the left, make sure no one's there, but then do a turn to the left. Like, and this turn is just a clearing turn. It's just to like clear the area. Use all the windows, look around, you know, lean forward if you have to. And then once you get to at this 90 degree point, you turn another 90 degrees. You can either call it a 180 or go back on heading, but then you're ready to do whatever maneuver. It's not available. Yeah, okay. Okay, that's not too bad. All I have to do is just remind him and the clearing turns are there. But it went beyond that. Um, I asked him for a simulated engine failure and it became clear that he hadn't really thought through the A, B, C, D, E thing. And that's okay, but here we are talking about saving money. So that's certainly something that can be thought of ahead of time. Okay, cool. Do you remember anything about the simulated engine failure procedure? Yeah. Okay, so you got the airplane? My airplane. What would you do if you just lost the engine? Uh, I would go, I would climb up. Okay, so let's say we lost the engine. So I'd climb up, hold it steady until we hit 60 or 75. No, 65. 68. Yep. 68. And then I would pitch for 68. Um, and then I would trim for that. And then I would look for a good landing spot. Um, so to be honest, right there, there's a little valley. Okay, let's head there. Um, uh, yeah, so I'm going to turn there. But I don't know, there's cloud cover there too. But there's some nice fields right there that kind of look good. Um, okay, so I'll do a flow check. So I'll try to restart the engine. So I'll turn it on, turn it off again at this point. Um, but actually, because we're under 2,000 feet, or I guess we're not actually, so we're still... So there's lots of ways for you to get ahead. You can go back to your primary source materials. Um, you can look at the airplane flying handbook, but this is the exact reason we're building the ground school app. So if you haven't taken your free trial yet and seen what's in there, um, in the flying section, in the skills section, I go through all of these lessons, just like this with a pre-flight briefing in the RV, 
five cameras in the airplane for the lesson mounted at the student's eye perspective, and then a debriefing that goes over common errors. So all of this is there, you know, all of the standard operating procedures I teach, there's an entire chapter on it. There's clearing turns and flow checks, checklists, call outs, um, all of it is in this app, right? So what I did was essentially assign Danny the app, say, go do this stuff. And the next time we meet, I know that he's not gonna make those basic mistakes. Um, here's what it looks like when somebody is prepared and ahead. This is Paul doing a pre-takeoff briefing. Okay, four hour departure, three zero is the runway. Wind is coming from approximately um, that direction. Okay. Our ball point is that second wind sock there. If we don't have 70% of our rotation speed by that point, so 40 knots, then we'll abort if we're on the runway. Okay. Um, if we have an engine failure um, and there's runway remaining, push forward, throttle to idle, land on the runway, and um, make sure uh, cut off, make sure to idle and fuel cut off. Okay. If there is no runway remaining, push forward for best glide, confirm throttle fully and mixture fully and fuel pump on, on both tanks. If no recovery, Mixture to cut off, fuel cut off, mags off, crack the doors, keep the electrics on in case we use the flaps on land, um, wingtip to wingtip. All right, so he's not rushing through that. I don't want to freak you guys out and have you watching every second on the clock during the run-up, or certainly if your CFI is trying to teach you something. Um, but we are going to expedite a little bit, right? <laughs> Which is aviation for rush. No, I'm kidding, it's not. But it's like you want to be prepared. The, you know, it's it's you know, move as expeditiously as possible um, while prepared. That's the best you can do. You just don't want to spend a lot of time trying to figure out the rote information uh, when your CFI's meter is burning and when the Hobbs meter is running. All right, another tip that I'm going to give you is what the pros do. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And the people that are really, really good at this, the airlines and the military, they all use procedural trainers, which are very simple devices. I mean, you can sit yourself down in front of a picture of the cockpit, of, you know, and just start running flow checks and checklists and start uh, going through start procedures. Imagine you're flying along and your CFI just told you to do a steep turn. What's the first thing you're going to do? Uh, maybe even film yourself with a GoPro so you can watch it back later and think, did I miss anything? I mean, if you're serious about saving money and training, I promise, I promise this will save you money. And the last tip I was gonna give you is similar to procedural training, but it's one step further. You have to go down to the airport, we call it dry time. And you just sit in the aircraft with the engine off, uh, just ask the flying club or the flight school for the keys to an airplane they're not using, and run your checklists and do exactly what you did in the procedural trainer, only now you're doing it in the actual aircraft. If you spend 30 minutes doing your procedural training and 30 minutes doing dry time and the rest of the time studying up on common errors and looking back what you did, you know, the lesson before, the things you got wrong, you are going to end up cutting entire lessons out, right? If Danny, for example, had showed up that way, then we wouldn't maybe have to fly again, right? So when, when you show up to a lesson thinking about it like it's a swimming lesson or a riding lesson and you're just gonna pick up where you left off, you're gonna end up adding multiple lessons to the training program that wouldn't even otherwise be there. And that, my friends, is going to cost you a lot of money. So I know you might not wanna hear it. It's sort of like take your vitamins, take your medicine, right? It's like something I didn't listen to when my basic, when my first CFI told me this. I don't know why it took me all the way to becoming a teacher before I thought, wow, I bet that really works. But I do know it now. I've saved a ton of money on my commercial multi, on my ATP, and on every single airplane checkout that I continue to do. All right, aviators, that's all for this episode of The Finer Points. A huge thanks to the patrons. There's tons of bonus content on Patreon, and that's a huge part of how I'm able to get all this content online and out to you. Uh, and still actually teach out here in the wild so that I can bring you valuable tips from the flight line. Um, also a big thanks to the sponsors, they're a huge part of that too. If you haven't seen our ground school app, um, definitely get it for the price of a couple hours with a CFI. Uh, you get a year of access to all of these gold nuggets about flying, tips that will save you money, make you a better, sharper, safer pilot. We're adding content all the time, we're improving the features. If you're a CFI, you get it for free, just send us an email. Um, but definitely check out your free three-day trial of Ground School. It's available at learnthefinerpoints.com. Leave a comment below. 
Let me know if there's a video you'd like to see me make and I will make it for you here or on Patreon. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the alert bell, share with your friends, but most importantly, until next time, be safe, fly your best.